Okay, so what we would like to do today is to apply Simpson's rule to this integral. And the goal is to figure out which n to use to have an error less than 10 to the negative 3. That's the question. Right, so as we get, as we uh, increase our value of n, we're going to have smaller and smaller error. We're actually told here, we don't have to evaluate this integral. We're told that the value of this uh, definite integral is pi over 6. It's 1 6 pi. We'd like to use Simpson's rule to get as close as possible to the actual one and figure out what n value we would, we would use to make sure that we would have a pretty small error. That's uh, 10 to the minus 3 is 1 1,000th. So let's just start with n equal 4 and apply Simpson's rule. Our starting place is the same as with all of our numerical approximations. We find delta x. If we find delta x, that's b minus a over n, which in this case is pi minus 0 over 4, which is pi over 4. Our x0 is the starting value, which is 0. And then we add delta x until we get up to the ending value. So x1 is pi over 4. x2 is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. x3 is 3 pi over 4. And x4 will be pi. Now, in order to apply Simpson's rule, remember what we do. We start with the first value. We start with the last, and we have the first value and the last value. The middle values alternate between 4s and 2s with coefficients. So we're going to be looking at f at x of o plus 4 f at x1 plus 2 f at x2 plus 4 f at x3. So we're alternating with coefficients 4, 2, 4, 2, and so on until we get to the second to the last, and we're ending right there. And then the last one just has a coefficient of 1 again. So f at x4. And we need to multiply by delta x over 3. So we're just plugging in these values. That's f at 0 plus 4 f at pi over 4 plus 2 f at pi over 2 plus 4 f at 3 pi over 4 plus f at pi all multiplied by delta x. Delta x is pi over 4 divided by 3 makes pi over 12. Now if we simply just plug these values in 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4 pi into this function, evaluate this all out. I'm not going to do that by hand. I've done that so that I can see what we get. We get 0.1643 times pi. And this is what this evaluates to. 1 sixth pi, 1 sixth is 0.16 repeating. So the question is, is this within 10 to the minus 3 of the correct value? Well, we need to include our pi as well. Uh, and so already we can see that the answer is going to be no, because that's within a thousandth. And this is not within a thousandth, because it's not within a thousandth even without multiplying by pi. So we will have to move to the next value of n and see what happens. So let's just try n equal 4. Uh, we tried n equal 4. Let's try n equal 8. If we try n equal 8, b minus a over n is pi minus 0 over 8 is pi over 8. And we work through our x values. x0 will be 0. x1 is pi over 8. We add delta x each time. x2 is 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4. x3 is 3 pi over 8. x4 is 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. 5 pi over 8, 6 pi over 8, 7 pi over 8, and 
and finally 8 pi over 8 is, is pi. So these are our x values. We are, apply our formula again. Remember, with a function value at, at the beginning, function evaluated at the end, uh, alternate with coefficients of 4 and 2 for the rest. So I want f at x0 plus 4 f at x1 plus 2 f at x2 plus 4 f at x3 plus 2 f at x4 plus 4 f at x5 plus 2 f at x6 plus 4 f at x7 plus, now we're at the very end, we've alternated between 4 or 2, the very last thing has a, a 1 as a coefficient, so just f at x8, and then we need to multiply it by, remember, uh, pi delta x over 3. So this again looks like a mess, I'll just write it out with these actual numbers. So this will become f at 0, plus 4 f at pi over 8, plus 2 f at uh, pi over 4, plus 4 f at 3 pi over 8, plus 2 f at pi over 2, plus 4 f at 5 pi over 8, plus 2 f at 3 pi over 4, plus 4 f at 7 pi over 8, and now we're at the end, so just plus f at pi, and then all multiplied by delta x over 3, delta x is pi over 8, so that's times pi over 24. Again, I've worked this out for us already. We end up getting 0.166663 pi, uh, which comes out to be 0.52387. So that's what we get for the n equals 8 approximation using Simpson's rule. If you just take 1 6 divided by pi, you get 0.523599. Oops, I missed something. 5235.87. These two numbers that we found match past the third decimal place, past 1, 1,000. These match actually even up to the, the, the fourth one, even if you round. So in fact, this is good enough. If you subtract these numbers, you're going to get something that is less than 10 to the minus third. So the answer to this question is n equals 8. If that didn't work, then we'd have to go to n equals 16, evaluate this, find the difference, and hope that it's also less than 10 to the negative 3. But, uh, this does two things. This illustrates the process for using Simpson's rule, and uh, the second idea of, of, of using it to, to measure the error between the use of the numerical approximation and the actual value.